Hello. Welcome to today's uh, section. Um, the fan announces Stuart and Rihanna, and I am surrounded by all this beautiful uh, fan announces Stuart and Rihanna. And this is very important species. Uh, it's in mo power in almost every single modern fan analysis hybrid have this species in the background. And this is the one of the uh, two major spring flowering species from the Philippines. Uh, we have covered the Philippines and Shuriana uh, before. The Stuarteriana is one of the later blooming, the spring blooming species from the Philippines. And can you do a close up on the little sepal? The characteristic is this spotting. And this is how the Vassel Lacou at France is actually the first one to do the, the, the breeding uh, with this kind of species. And they call it the, the term called, we call it called French spotted. So this is the, the modern, what we call the French spotted hybrid. And this almost have a, this, this many spot. They all from this species called Phenonopsis Stuart and Rihanna. And a lot of time, even in today's modern miniature, uh, for example, this is the Pindon Cherry. Uh, Pindon Cherry is a very popular hybrid. You can tell they have the student influence on them because the leaf, the marking. Okay, that's one of another plus of the species student arena is the, the variegated foliage. Then, and most of them are, do have variegated foliage. And what I have here is the lime breeding of one hybrid we've been breeding in America. And this is our NF2450. Okay, 2450 is the one strand using the, the water stool and Rihanna variety Sogo. I personally was there on the team to award that particular crone. Uh, that plant is actually very unique, very compact. Uh, doesn't get really long, which is a plus. And, and then I do have a, a privilege to have a pollen from one of my friends from Philippines, uh, the wild strain. And so I did a cross with them. And to my surprise, I really just amazed for the possibility of this cross had come up. They do have a lot of what we call the silver leaf market because the regular store uh the marking is like this. This is the typical of student and marking. Very simple. If you don't have flower, it might be mistaken as Shuriana. But look at this one here. This is what we call the silver marking. You don't see a lot of the darkness. This is very, very a new line of breeding. And many of you know, I do breed now for the foliage on the, on the orchid species, especially the, for the ornamental. Uh, so take a look at the, this is a typical marking of the uh, Stuart and Rihanna. Okay. Very dark and a touch of silver there. Versus this one here, you see here? So this is the one is being selected by me. And I have, I have shown this picture to my good friend Yang Yang in Taiwan. He said he had never seen this kind of strain before. He have asked me to, to uh, put a sepa on that, either selfie or just do a sibling with my other collection here. So which we're actually gonna cross the two of the, the best, best silver leaf on that. And interesting thing enough is uh, a lot of this Stuart and Rihanna uh, hybrid it does carry out the, the marking. And this is the modern, look at how beautiful. Every time you see a French spotted, they do have silver leaf. So this is actually more desirable for me as a breeder, as, uh, to have this kind of uh, French spotted variegation like this, 
versus just a, sip, a simple print green. It looks more complex. Yes, and, and this is actually going to re-tissue re culture again. Look at the flower on this. It's, it's really, really diffuse. It's almost like a watercolor artist, uh, water, the painting. The, 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 it's really mm -hmm. contrast. And this is actually, we saw out of this, this is a, uh, uh, a clone. It's, called, it, it's been registered and then we gave it a clone called Paris. Uh, this is the one line breeding that we, Jamie and I was in Paris that 20 years ago. We got the, we got it from uh, Monsieur Lacou. We went to visit him and the print we, we, we brought back and it's been our collection and in the breeding program for about 20 years now. And I just love the foliage. So this is going to be re again. Okay. And it, in addition to regular Stuttgart now, lady, we're going to have, we, this is a new kit on the block. This is the newest species. And it's called Stuttgart Nobialis. Okay. Nobialis is a very new discovered variant of the Stuttgart I think about maybe 10, 15 years ago. What different between these two species is the leaf, the majority of the leaf does not have marking. In fact, this is a typical leaf of Nobelus. And they're more compact. I'm going to leave you this here. And the one, the interesting enough is, when they first open, they're sort of like whitish color, and they, the the flower, the the flower is, is hanging down, almost like daffodil in a way, uh, and it then they gradually kind of wake up, in the facing the sun, and do not take this to judging or to the show until they fully open. The development of this, you know, could take about maybe six to eight weeks before they fully open. And the way they, they flower is that popcorn. They, they go really fast going up and then the flower just popping one and one at a time. And when they first fully mature, this is the size, this is the color of the flower. They, they turn really, really a canary yellow, okay. So this is one species is really fun, really fun. So uh, today, after the podcast, uh, I'm going to do some, uh, do more line breeding. What I'm going to do is maybe pick up one of these with the, the best foliage. This is the, this is my my favorite this year. Very compact. Okay. So this will be a good candidate for me to cross with other for future breeding. I'm going to cross with some of the maybe do a, a silver of my silver leaf. This two will be a good, good candidate for breeding. Uh, some of the leaves can be big, that's okay. Uh, but I think we're gonna, uh, re we're gonna have a two strand. We're gonna have the selfing of this particular one. So that means when we do selfing, uh, we're gonna reinforce the compactness of this strand. I like this strand because this do have a really nice branching havoc. You notice that they do kind of short and compact spikes. Then we're also going to do more sibling of some of the bigger leaf, and that's okay. Because bigger leaf does have a lot of uh, different value, especially the lip, especially this one here. Jeff, Roger, can you see this one here? Look at the, the spotting on the petal. The little sepal and the lip, and even from the back, there's lots of lots of green in there. Okay, so this could be a really fun to cross with the white Stuart Ariana and even some of the white Alphabet for Monsana from Taiwan. So this is actually gonna be really fun for me. Uh, maybe you will see some of the results in three to four years from here. So we actually remaking uh, because some of this hybrid, a primary hybrid, 
was initially maybe, maybe, maybe 100 years ago, okay? And we don't have that material anymore. But what we do have is some of the more modern uh, primary hybrid. And that's my job and my passion is doing this right now. Okay, what about the culture? The, there's very distinct different culture between the regular white student in Indiana and the yellow one. Okay, I'm gonna go with the, with the white one first. Uh, yes, they're from Philippines. If you can, if you have been successful growing student Indiana, uh, Philippines and uh, Philippines and Shuriana, you're in good company. They're very similar in culture. Uh, yes, they are very good to leave. So in the summertime, when they are doing their vegetation, make sure giving heavier shade. Remember, when they're in the jungle, in the summertime, a lot of foliage are growing on the tree, so they are heavy shade. So make sure, if, especially uh, if you're in the south, South Florida, uh, Houston, or the south, the, the Bible Belt, your summer is going to be hot and humid, given extra shade during the summer when they are in the vegetative stage. And just just that just that the student in Indiana, uh, Philippines and Shuriana, right before the flower in the fall, you can actually gradually put them closer to the window, getting more light. They like that. So they once they have more light, uh, because the intensity of the light in the fall and winter will be lower, much lower than in the summertime. That's when they're going to in, uh, trigger the flower. Uh, the yellow one is. A little bit different story. Uh, the yellow one, the Nobelis. I have been growing this species for about 10 years now. And what really distinct on the yellow one is, I think in the long term, they do better as a mounted. If you look at the, they do have a different, really different uh, root structure. The root It's actually usually a smaller and not as thick as the white one. And also the Nobelis, uh, if you don't have good water quality at your home, they, they're a little bit picky on the water water quality. So uh, I if maybe give them bottled water. If you if you think your water is not good, uh, if your electrical conductivity is above one, the EC is above one, just a tap water alone. Uh, use of tap water, use the bottle of water, uh, especially in the summertime when they are growing. Uh, this tend to be a smaller, uh, slower species than the regular form. So when you buy the Nobelis, just what I said before, always buy the mature side, never buy the tiny little seeding. Let the professional grower do, 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 do the work because uh, in less, uh, what I call eyelash side, they are very, very sensitive to salt and uh, stress. So always buy the booming size uh, when they are available. Okay. Uh, the pests, they do not have a lot of pests, maybe occasionally mini bud on them because they don't really, uh, not as chewy. The leaf structure itself is very open. So it's not like banana or some other species that kind of too close together. So they always have a lot of good air movement. So, uh, and they might, and spider mite don't like them I, because they're too thick. They, the, if you feel the leaf, they're more like stuck in the leaf. So they, they usually, the mite and mite and strip usually go, go after the, the really thin leaf, like um, Emboriensis or Bellina or Valencia. So they actually, for me, they are very, very uh, pest and disease resistant. And because they are from uh, the wild, so, so this particular strain I'm very, very proud of, I hardly lose any plant. And this is why we do uh, type and, what we call type and breeding. We always, every generation, we always pick. When, when I have a luxury to flower, 100 of seeding, and we usually take out the best one, whether uh, we select for the color. Uh, this particular one is another charmer. You know, one in a thousand. Not only has nice silver leaf, uh, the, the more silver leaf is when it is exposed to light. But this one, for some reason, it just like dwarf in growing havoc. And this 
it's the one that I will be selfing. Uh, this is Jeff. This is perfect for under light growing because a lot of studentaria just a lot of studentaria just it can the, the flower spike can be as tall as two three feet tall. Uh, but we try not to breed that kind of stuff. Here's a, a perfect example of the the same cross. This is all the same cross, but this one has exhibit the wild species strength. Look how tall the flower spike before they stop ranching. Okay, so this is the wild wild strength characteristic. Uh, this will be not as desirable. For, for some people to have limited space, but this is wonderful if you live in Florida. That's also something you really can't ship out in spike, right? You, no, I mean, that, we, that's we don't just ship this too in large. flower. It, the, or, yeah, you can do in spike, ship. but not in flower. This is why on the website, uh, right now, we usually do it uh, uh, in show spikes, okay, in show, show spiking stage, uh, or, but right now, getting, uh, when, we, when we go through this, and buy the mature uh, plant, okay. And I would I would do a segment sometime this summer, how to mount this orchid. And mounting is fun for this. You can you do a basket, or mount it on the plaque, okay. Because the leaf is just gorgeous, okay. So, to in conclusion, okay, grow this wonderful species. You know, with all your regular standards spring booming fan analysis uh, the season is only in the springtime so by about summer hit about July fall of July this should be all finished and that is when you uh, can should cut off the spikes okay and then you can decide whether to repot them so or these last about four months from the beginning to the end take about at least four months yeah, you can. They, they're really slow in, in development. It, in, it can take two, at least two months before you see the first flower open. So you have to be patient. That's how they, you know, that's how they were grown in the wild. So this is actually a uh, very, very uh, fun species to have. The only thing is that, like for the Peninsis, they do not have fragrance, you know. But the flowers are always bigger than Shuriana. And we are going to remake another primary hybrid is Shuriana and Studeriana. And one other thing I'm going to make is I be nobody ever done it before. Remember my my silver leaf. One of my favorites. My silver leaf. This is a, a eight to ten years old. They don't they don't get big. Eight to ten years old. Shur, uh, Shuriana with a silver leaf. And I'm gonna be busy making them either with this one here and also with a dwarf one here. If you guys don't have that one, you really need to order this one. Th this one is just a uh, display in your house by itself. And then also the gonna cherry make tree these, one, uh, the one I like to call cherry blossom. The silver distress with the nobelis. Okay, so this will be a fun one because I, this, this kind of primary hybrid has been done before. And uh, I seen the first flower open is orange. So the primary hybrid is kind of orange. And with this one here, it's even darker. And so we're gonna be fun. So st stay with me, okay? We're gonna have a, you're gonna have a lot of new exciting primary coming up in the near future. Well, thank you for joining me today. And if you're interested in this particular strain, uh, this is the one to order. And it is all have silver, what I call the silver leaf strain. So we only offer the one had the silver leaf ish marking on them. And that is what is really distinct from the same old, same old uh, Stuart area. Okay. And we also got one of these plants, uh, a first one seen 